Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Bon après-midi à tous. Uh, happy Monday. Uh, first day of the week for some. Um, bienvenue, Nabil. Bienvenue, uh, Nick. Je vois que vous êtes déjà arrivé. I see that you guys are here already. Fantastic. Beautiful. So today's episode... Um, <clears throat> I'll be talking about filters. Je vais parler aujourd'hui euh, un peu euh, sur les filtres, les différents filtres qu'on peut utiliser en numérique. Euh, oh, je vois que j'ai un peu de ça ici, on va l'enlever. J'étais justement en train de faire des, des impressions aujourd'hui. I've been uh, working on printing today. I've got a conference coming up uh, later this week for the FAC, uh, the Federation, la Fédération des astronomes amateurs euh, du Québec. Et puis, justement, je fais une conférence plus tard cette semaine sur l'impression. À un moment donné, je vais faire aussi un épisode soit préenregistré ou un épisode de diffusion en direct comme celui-ci. Justement, cette, je suis en train de, de, de tout replanifier mon horaire à propos des épisodes live. Puis, je vais incorporer aussi des, des, des épisodes préenregistrés. Welcome, Mark. Welcome, Lynn. Nice to see you guys. So today we're going to be talking about filters, uh, lens filters to be exact. Uh, and we're going to go through different types. Um, I've uh, picked up a couple of websites that had some pretty good uh, online uh, resources, uh, online information uh, about them. And uh, again, as usual, I've got to get some of the, the descriptions up to date there, the, the The, uh, in the, comment, the commentary section of the episodes, but um, c'est sûr et certain, à un moment donné, je vois, tous les épisodes euh, vont avoir leurs euh, ressources, les liens de leurs ressources que je suis en train d'utiliser, euh, pour que vous, vous pouvez aller les voir euh, individu individuellement, plus précisément, que qu'est-ce que je peux couvrir dans une heure aussi. So that way you'll be able to, you know, uh, go and check out the websites and, and maybe, you know, follow them a little bit more precisely than I can Uh, within the hour that I that I spend here with you. Don't forget, uh, if you have a chance, um, Nabil, yes, there will be. I'm in the process of working on one as I am already uh, in the process of uh, <clears throat> building the conference that I'm doing for the FAC, uh, but there will be um, printing episodes also. Uh, different types of printing for different types of photography. Um, the one I'm, per I'm particularly working on this week is on uh, astrophotography. So, um, you know, uh, starry skies, to give you a quick example, this was a... So I'll see if I can... Well, mind you, you can't see it very well there. Actually, this would be a perfect test. I'm going to switch cameras here, and I'm going to see if you can see better here. Okay. Okay. Not that it's flat because it's on my hand. That's where you're getting all the reflections from. But basically, I, I printed this off of a Canon. Um, here I'm using it, by the way. I was um, It was good enough of uh, my shop to uh, Gosselin Photo to loan me the uh, Canon M50 that I'm using here as a uh, tertiary camera. Je suis en train d'utiliser un troisième appareil ici pour montrer les, justement, vous allez voir aussi, j'ai quelques filtres en dessous de la papier que je suis en train de vous montrer. Mais voici une impression que j'ai fait avec un Canon TS 6120, uh, which is actually just a five color printer. Five, it's black. It's got two, two, two blacks, a cyan, a magenta, and a um, yellow. And it, it's not bad for what, for what so far I've done with it. It's, it, 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 it's pretty good. So, sorry about that. I know I'm off topic here, but just to give you an example of what's coming. Um, whoops. The um, So, today we're going to talk about filters. We're going to talk about density, uh, neutral density filters. We're going to talk about polarizers. We're going to talk about graduated filters. I would have also liked to look or talk to you about uh, colored filters, but instead what I'm going to see, I don't know if I I've got to check and see if I can do it with the... Um, With the M50, but um, I still haven't received my dongle for the uh, HDMI to um, USB, so that I could have showed you on the Fuji. But Fuji has already in their color profiles uh, in the camera itself, um, black and white, 
well, black and white filter also in consequence of yellow, red, and green, which are typically the three colors that we normally would have used in black and white photography. And the color, the color filters are actually more used for the black and white than they are for the color. Uh, I mean, you put a red filter, everything turns red, but in black and white, they, and especially when it was, when it came to film, um, well, you know, especially when it came to film uh, photography, we couldn't adjust for um, contrast, we couldn't adjust for saturation, we couldn't adjust, you know, so at that point what we had to do was we had to change the light going into the lens, and by doing, and, and by changing the actual colors of the filters was actually uh, changing what light was passing through the optics to get to the film itself, which created more contrasty or less contrasty, more saturated, well, because of the saturation um, images. But we're going to start here with, and I've, I've actually set up a couple of examples here. Um, let's start with, hold on just a sec, let me get my... So basically here, to give you an example of what um, neutral density filters can do. Okay, now a neutral density filter, un filtre de densité nette, en tant que tel, qu'est-ce que ça fait, c'est que... Ça l'enlève la lumière. Ça l'enlève la lumière sans changer les couleurs en tant que telles. Et pourquoi qu'on voudrait faire ça? Why would we want to do that? Um, in particular, the neutral density filter allows us to um, take longer exposures so that we can capture time, motion. Okay? That's why we um, welcome um, uh, Takuya. Uh, welcome to the to the channel. I think it's the first time uh, we we meet here on the channel. Uh, I hope uh, I hope you'll enjoy. By the way, people, don't forget if you when you get a chance, like if you like the episode, uh, please like the uh, like the episode um, in the comments. If you have any comments, you had suggestions you'd like to add or uh, anything else you'd like me to add, please put them in the comments. If you haven't joined already and you're still interested in the channel. Please join the channel. Uh, it's the only way I can get live analytics of how what's popular and what's what's piquing everybody's interest. Uh, so here we have uh, right here. I'm going to switch over to my screen capture and we'll look at this here. So what it, what a, den, a, a neutral density filter does is it allows us to diminish the light coming into the lens, keeping the same aperture ISO but increasing the time it takes to get that particular exposure. So if we look at a photo before, we have a little bit of motion here up top at the waterfall. We have a little bit of motion over here um, on the right, you'll notice. And you can see just a little bit of swirling over here in the pool of water that's more still. Okay, you'll notice the colors are all of the same. Um, you know, they're all, it's, it, the image itself is well exposed. Okay. Actually, you know what? If I do this, will it get rid of the photo? It'll get rid of the photo. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll put the advertising back on. Uh, and what we, what happens when we use a neutral density filter is basically, uh, and you see, you'll notice here that, uh, does it have the original exposure? Let me see here. Yeah, so here we've got an original exposure at f11 at 100 ISO, shot at one fifth of a second, which is this particular image here. Okay, and everybody can do that within within the capacity of their uh, cameras. But if we put an ND6 filter itself, notice the big difference. Now, yes, the image itself is. You can, you'll notice a difference here when I pass. There's a slight underexposure that's been done here, but r technically it's because the camera itself, as it was shot, can't go farther than 30 seconds. So typically here would have needed maybe uh, maybe a 200, of, uh, sorry, a 200 ISO. Um, typically when we do these kinds of landscape, uh, landscape shots here, we don't necessarily really uh, open the aperture up because you're changing your depth of field, right? And typically, you'd want to have either an F8, an F11, or an F16. Uh, in this particular case, we're at F F11, and the limit of the camera, which is a just it's which which was a D750 here, I believe that is that a D750. 
Oh, sorry, that was that's an advertisement. Uh, but with the camera that was used for this particular image, um, the limit and and uh, aside from Panasonic and Olympus, where their um, shutter speeds can go up to 60 seconds, and Fuji, which now in the last couple of years has increased their uh, shutter speed to be able to go up to 15 minutes. Um, which is really interesting when you're doing night photography and you're doing astrophotography. Okay, um, but as you can see here, an ND6, uh, f or ND, uh, sorry, and then uh, ND minus six uh, stops is really taking away six stops of light, so that you can really get that swirling over here in the middle of the uh, the pond, and you can get the real motion of the water here. In the and I'll be honest with you myself when I'm doing shots like this I usually tend to go with five even sometimes ten minutes worth of uh, time because you really 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 get that that blurry motion of the waterfall and of the river here. Fait que ici comme vous voyez si on prend la photo telle quelle à l'exposition à 100 ISO f11 ça nous donne déjà une vitesse de un cinquième de seconde. Puis c'est sûr et certain on voit tantinet un, un, un certain mouvement, mais c'est pas un mouvement complet. C'est quand même un certain figement de mouvement parce qu'on voit carrément que, tu sais, même les petites bulles qui sont ici dans le, le, la, la partie qui est plus lent, qui bouge plus lentement, euh, puis les réflexions en tant que telles euh, sont quand même assez figées. Il, les, 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 les zones du, 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 du photo où ce que ça bouge plus vite, c'est sûr et certain à un cinquième de seconde. On s'en va chercher ce mouvement-là. Okay. Mais, qu'est-ce qu'on veut faire dans ces cas ici, c'est plutôt de, 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 de voir exactement qu'est-ce que ça donne en fonction de temps, puis mouvement, puis avec un, un filtre de densité neutre de 6 stops, euh, on parle de 1 cinquième de seconde à 30 secondes. Now, to show you what, I'm going to see how it's going to work with this. I'm going to switch over now over here to my M50. I have a neutral, no, that's a 10 stop, sorry. My six stop, I don't know if, how it's going to work with this. So have a look at basically the uh, the image that you see there with the filters, okay? And I, we'll go into square and uh, round filters in a minute, but right now, if you'll notice here, now that, well, the camera's actually adjusting for its shutter speed to bring you, but basically, when you look at, this particular so can you see well wait a minute it's hard yeah there you can see a little bit see the difference this one over here is a six stop and this one over here is a 10 stop put them together and they become now they become a, de a 10 stop which is even more even darker still okay the moment where you try to um the moment where you try to um increase that time is when you need darker filters and those darker filters again don't necessarily well they don't necessarily they do not um they do not affect the colors themselves the saturation of the colors because they're that's why they're called neutral density okay so this is a neutral density i noticed there's a couple of questions here hold on a second okay so do i think canon is better than nikon absolutely not um, all cameras are, are, are equally, uh, I mean, some are more, slightly more advanced than others, but as far as cameras go, I'm, I'm not, um, I have my own preferences as far as Mark uh, makes, but not, um, is one better than the other? Not really. Uh, they both do the same things. All, all of the bodies all do the same things. Some might do certain things a little bit better, other things differently. Um, I love Fujifilm cameras. They're, they're great. And I have no idea who that is, Jean Renault. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm not here to really talk about my preferences or in the stat. We're here to talk about filters. So let's go on and see what else we've got here. So in photography, in uh, sorry, in landscape photography, mostly what we're using it with us are either uh, polarizers, and we'll talk about polarizers in a moment. But we are typically using uh, neutral density filters exactly for that reason to be able to um control the amount of 
motion blur that we want to incur in the image itself for whatever zones are moving moving in that image. C'est-à-dire que en, en, en paysage, en, euh, techniquement, qu'est-ce qu'on cherche à utiliser, c'est plutôt d'y aller chercher soit des densités, des filtres densité neutre ou des filtres euh, polarisants. Euh, je t'avoue que les polarisants normalement sont, sont, sont variables, autant que vous pouvez aussi avoir certains filtres de densité neutre variables aussi. Mais il faut faire très attention avec les filtres de densité neutre parce que quand même que ça serait euh, justement, voyons, well, so I have here a uh, variable neutral density filter. So if I, if you look at it here, actually you can even see my hand under, let's try to get the reflection away. You'll notice that as I turn the wheel, this neutral density filter becomes either darker or brighter. Okay. Which is great. Uh, which is great except when you are uh, at the maximum and the absolute minimum of these particular filters because the way that the filters are constructed, sorry, it helps if you were looking at me. The way that these filters are constructed is that uh, basically just, I mean, I'm not going to get into the actual physics and all the actual science of it, but basically it's, it's what it's doing is you have two panes of glass that are, have been etched and they're offset. So when they're aligned, they're blocking more light. When they are completely opposite each other, they're letting more light in. And sometimes the problem is, is that depending on what focal length you're using, and typically it's usually somewhere in the 18, 16, and 12 millimeters, the wider the angles are, the more you're getting of these uh, um, etched uh, effects where you're starting to get a hatch literally on the, um, uh, on the, uh, which, on the, uh, on the image that you're shooting. So if you start to see a hatch mark or hatch marks on your image, be, that's because you've used the filter beyond where it should be used. Okay. A lot of times, I'll be honest with you, you know, they'll say it's a minus two to a minus eight. Well, you know, its sweet spot is usually minus three to minus uh, six or minus maybe minus seven. Okay. But when you get to those, the the higher you pay for 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 these filters or I should say the more that you pay for these filters, you should have less of that effect. Um, but you still will get that effect at the extremes. Of, and that, that goes for any piece of equipment. You know, even though marketing and, 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 and uh, advertising will say um, that you're, you, know, you can play within this range and this range, uh, they're really pushing it to push more, more numbers and to push more sales too. So always understand that, you know, when it comes to electronics specifically, when it comes to electronics and, 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 and uh, digital, that tolerance, that, that plane of tolerance that, or range of tolerance is always, 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 always much more than what we would normally accept. Okay, so, you know, you gotta, you gotta take everything with a grain of salt uh, and find out whatever system you're using, whatever filter system you're using, what their limit is and work within those limits, okay? Um, yes, you are right. You do lose contrast when start, we start using uh, variable filters versus solid filters. And that's exactly why um, um, I prefer using solid filters to the uh, variable ones. Uh, the other thing is also that um, a good quality filter will normally, and when it comes to ND filters, a good quality filter will always be based on infrared more than just uh, having a gray film uh, or a gray, um, what, what they call micro coating uh, put on the filter, it'll actually stop the infrared uh, light coming in, which, which you, you keep your contrast as is. Okay. Uh, polarizers, on the other hand, uh, are used in uh, landscape photography, um, mostly for the fact that it can remove reflections from stray light. Oh, excuse me. C'est vrai. Uh, je vais le dire en, je vais, je vais, je vais, je vais retourner en français. C'est que, uh, typiquement, um, quand vous utilisez des, 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 des filtres, puis ça, ça, ça va avec n'importe quel filtre uh, variable de densité neutre, uh, typiquement, vous avez toujours, un, ils vont toujours vous dire qu'il y a une certaine limite, genre un moins 2 à un moins 8, mais tant, en normal, temps normal, là, ça, ton, ton moins 2, moins 8, ça serait plutôt un moins euh, 3 à moins 7, parce que le, les extrêmes, 
de la, la, la plage d'extrémité, euh, ça tombe que vous allez voir plus de défauts créés par le filtre en tant que tel. Puis, en filtre de densité neutre, qu'est-ce qui va arriver? C'est que vous allez voir que dans votre photo, si jamais vous avez des, des carreaux, or, carreaux, je veux dire des carrés, des lignes avec des carrés dessus, puis typiquement, ça va être à les très, très grands angles, c'est-à-dire les 12, les 14, les 16, les 18 mm euh, en fonction de focale, c'est là où, ça, où ce que ça va être beaucoup, beaucoup plus apparent. OK? Fait que quand même que vous auriez un, un, un filtre de, de, de rester en, en dedans d'un certain euh, prime de, 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 de plage en tant que tel. Euh, préfé ma préférence en tant que telle, c'est que quand j'utilise des, fil des filtres de densité neutre, je vais plutôt aller chercher des filtres qui sont fixes parce que c'est soit que je ne veux pas nécessairement changer à, à chaque fois. L'autre chose aussi, c'est qu'il faut comprendre que le fil les fils qui sont ronds vissent sur l'objectif, tandis que, puis justement, si, avec certains objectifs, quand je visse le filtre ici, je change mon mise au point en même temps. Tandis que dans, dans cette, part, dans cette particuli particularité ici, mon mise au point est assez figé que, que, que je peux même dévisser mon filtre et sans changer mon mise au point. Mais si vous avez des, justement des filtres, euh, pas des filtres, excusez, des kits euh, entrée de gamme ou qu'est-ce qu'on appelle des bundles, c'est-à-dire que vous achetez une boîtier puis déjà un objectif vient avec, ces objectifs-là, le moment, la mise au point manuel, ça se fait sur le, sur le bord de, c'est-à-dire justement sur le bord de les, euh, les objectifs. Canon, Nikon sont très, sont très, euh, très, 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 très populaires pour ça dans les, dans les, dans les cas des, entrées, des, des, des appareils entrée de gamme. Il euh, faut juste savoir que, tu sais, vous devez faire la mise au point, tenir l'objectif, puis après ça, revisser ton, ton, ton filtre par-dessus. OK, pour être capable d'aller chercher. Puis le mise au point, normalement, quand on le fait, on le fait en, 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 en excusez, avec le filtre enlevé. Pas avec le filtre, parce que c'est... Écoute, quand tu es rendu à moins 10 stops, moins, moins 6 stops, moins 10, moins 16 stops, vous ne vous, vous verrez rien dans le viseur en tant que tel. Uh, what I was just saying there is that... Also, don't forget that when you're using circular filters, you have to screw them on the end of the, on the, end of the lens itself. And if you're using entry-level I would say even entry to entry mid level cameras uh, where you bought the camera as a bundle where it came with two or three lenses typically those what we call those um uh well those kit lenses um they're not as you know structurally sound as a higher end lens will be in this particular case uh for this camera my focus is on the barrel of the lens not on the end of the lens. Nikons and Canons are very well known for their kit lenses where the focus is actually, the, ed the manual focus is actually on the edge of that, that last, last, last piece of that lens is what controls the focus. So at that point, what you have to do is you have to hold the barrel with one hand and screw the filter on with the other. Because typically you also don't want to do your focus with the filter on. Because at minus six, minus 10 and minus Uh, 16, like the ones that I use, your focus has to be done in broad day, I mean, full light, okay, so that particular case, your your preference is always to um, do your focus beforehand, before you, and that's also, I'll be honest with you, that's exactly one of the other reasons why I use the square filters. A square filter, okay, has what we call a filter holder, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. So this is the filter holder that, let's say, this particular filter will fit in just like so, sorry, just like so. So right now it's covering the whole entry level of the, and this, uh, this is, I'll show you uh, for on our website, this is a Nisi uh, system, which is very, very close to the Lee filter system. And... Um, You'll be able to do everything. You you have all of the options you'd have with uh, Lee filters. Uh, this company goes from minus, actually, this one goes through minus one all the way up to minus uh, 16, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the kit that I have comes also with a 
uh, polarizer which fits here inside the um, inside the holder and I can cr control the polarizer by spinning I don't know if I can see, if you can see it yeah you can see this little wheel right here that turns the ring on the inside which would in turn turn your polarizer okay now let's talk about polarizer filters fait que ça c'était justement euh, qu'est-ce que je vous avais montré là ça c'était le mon kit de de, de Nissi euh, le kit en tant que tel que j'ai c'est le kit standard, euh, parce qu'il y a un kit débutant, il y a un kit juste avec le polarisant, avec le, le porte-filtre, et puis ils ont euh, deux autres kits plus avancés encore. Euh, ça, de, ça dépend qu qu'est-ce euh, qu que vous avez besoin en fonction de, euh, de filtre. Euh, moi, j'ai pris le standard parce que justement, le standard vient avec un euh, euh, dégradé. Okay? Fait que celui-là, on va l'utiliser plutôt quand que notre notre, pas notre sujet, mais je veux dire notre ciel est plus clair que notre sol ou que le sol est plus clair que notre ciel. Ça, ça dépend, tu sais, on peut l'inverser. Et puis, c'est justement pourquoi que il est dégradé ici. OK? Vous avez le, le, la, la partie ici en haut qui est fait un moins 3, cran de lumière, puis ici, vous avez un 0 en tant que tel. Um, so, uh, justement, puis le porte-filtre ici que, que, que vous voyez dans mes mains ici, je ne sais pas si vous allez le voir. Attends, il faut que je l'oriente comme que... Pour que... Non, pas ça. Ça ici, vous, vous verrez qu'il y a vraiment trois tracks pour être capable de euh, fitter les trois. C'est-à-dire mon... Euh, so, typiquement, qu'est-ce que je fais, c'est que la première... Les deux premières euh, euh, tracks sur le portaculaire vont porter soit un ou les deux de mes filtres euh, solides. Puis la dernière va aller chercher justement mon euh, dégradé ici pour que je puisse contrôler mon ciel versus mon sol en fonction que j'ai besoin. L'anneau ici, la monture ici tourne, fait que je peux orienter dépendant comment je mets mon... Euh, comment est-ce que je, je veux dire mon euh, gradué à, à propos du horizon, ben, je peux l'adapter en fonction de le tournant sans toucher le mise au point euh, sur l'objectif. Euh, so, the reason that it spin, uh, sorry, the reason that, that the actual holder spins on itself is so that I can adjust the horizon for my um, gra graduated filter. Okay, let's continue over here. I want this one. Sorry. Um, then you have uh, polarizer filters. Now, polarizer filters, what they do is, uh, do I have a gra uh, let me see if I have a graphic here for polarizer. So here you have, just to give you an example, voici normalement les, 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 les grades de filtre qu'on va utiliser. Euh, fait qu'ici, vous avez deux crans de lumière, moins deux crans de lumière à 0.6 ou 25% de lumière qui est... Um, qui passe en travers du, 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 du filtre. Vous avez euh, 0.9 à 3, euh, 0.6. Je t'avoue que moi, j'ai un 0.6 et un 0.10. Parce que, justement, comme que euh, le 0.6 laisse seulement euh, 1.5% de la lumière passer, mon, euh, mon, je veux dire, mon 10 stop ici va laisser euh, un centième un centième ou un dixième? Non, un dixième. Oui, un dixième de, de, de lumière qui va passer ici, que si je mets les deux ensemble, le 6 et le 10, maintenant j'ai un millième de lumière qui passe à travers. Juste pour te dire à quel point que vous contrôlez le, la lumière qui rentre. OK? Mon 3, mais ça c'est mon, mon, mon gradué. Si jamais je dois euh, baisser l'éclairage dans mon ciel. Um, Puis pourquoi est-ce qu'on fait ça? C'est sûr et certain, oublie, euh, comme j'ai dit dans les, dans, dans euh, as I had mentioned in my description, comme j'ai mentionné dans mon description, euh, mercredi, je vais vous montrer aussi à quel point qu'on peut faire ça numériquement, euh, genre dans Lightroom en tant que tel. Um, but again, as much as certain treatments digital treatments can bring out the same types of um, 
effects as these physical filters do, um, don't forget you have you're working with a lot less information, and you can't necessarily capture motion on a photo that's already been frozen in time. Okay, um, so when it comes to uh, the gradient filters and stuff like that, yes, you can do that in post treatment. Uh, saturation, you can do that also. But the idea is also the photographer him, himself, what he wants to do is capture the most information he needs to create the image he wants. And then from that, be able to manipulate it later on uh, in post-treatment. Okay? Um, so, you know, filters are always a great step up from just doing it in Photoshop or doing it in Lightroom. Okay, uh, the fact that you have that much more information is totally, totally, totally um, a plus because you have more information to play with. Okay, so uh, let's go continue on down. So here we have the graduated filter, uh, and the graduated filter is exactly that. And normally, graduated filters go from one, two, three. I, be, I believe I've seen them go up to about six stops, um, but. For what I what I do, what I use, and I'm talking about 10 minute exposures and broad daylight, broad, uh, middle of the day, sun is at the highest. Say avec mes avec mes filtres en tant que tel, là, dans pleine journée, je, je m'en vais chercher quand même des expositions de 10 minutes. Puis 10 minutes là avec un chute ou avec un, un ruisseau, une rivière euh, qui a qui a quand même un certain flou. Euh, écoute, or je vous dirais début de flou. Euh, ça, ça, ça devient très, très, très intéressant. Euh, justement, à, avant de, de finir euh, aujourd'hui, euh, je vous montrerai la dernière que j'ai faite, qui était cet hiver, à, pas, pas, pas loin de, de Montebello. Euh, justement, pendant que je fais ça, euh, je vais juste... Quick, quick, quick. I'm just going to let this open up. I forgot to start her up before. Um, je vais vous montrer exactement que de quoi je parle euh, quand je parle d'une exposition de 10 minutes. Parce qu'autant que, tu sais, on va aller chercher quand même un, un certain euh, temps pour exposition en photo de nuit, on peut la faire aussi en, en, en fonction de, de jour aussi. Now, as far as the neutral density uh, graduated filters go, you have different qualities. You have a soft edge or you have a hard edge. And it all depends on how you want to uh, incorporate that particular, um, whoops, how you want to incorporate that particular, come on, uh, grade, gradation, okay, or graduation, I should say. Uh, you also have um, reverse graduated filters. Mind you, um, you know, with the filter holders today, you just have to flip it over too, it does the same thing. What this does is, uh, well, I mean, it's the reverse of your de of your neutral density filter, okay? Polarizer filters. Now, what that does is a polarizer filter plays with saturations and contrasts in the final image, and it also eliminates reflective surface uh, reflective uh, glare. It eliminates glare from reflective surfaces. And when we talk about that, we're talking about. I don't, yeah. We're talking about, um, let's say I'm taking a picture in a window and I want to be able to see through the window without any, uh, sorry, without any um, distracting reflections, okay? Or sometimes I want to increase that reflection, the contrast of that reflection. That's where the polarizing filter comes in. Um, today, most of the polarizers that we use on digital, because of their auto-focusing systems, have to be circular polarizers. Um, although, um, no, actually, uh, yeah, my, my uh, now you have variable circular polarizers as you have fixed variable, uh, sorry, fixed circular, uh, well, fixed polarizers. But what you have to understand is that the uh, polarizing filter has to be able to move freely so that you can uh, have one here. Where did I put it? This one is a, is this the polarizer? Um, this is the, no, this is the NDX. Where's my, oh, it's over here. 
So a polarizer filter, what that allows you to do, okay, now also I'm going to tell you right off the bat a trick when it comes to, circ when it comes to any type of filter itself. Don't make, the, don't make the mistake that many people do and think that they actually need to buy a filter for every lens, okay? You can buy what we call, I'm going to show you, so basically here I've got different, so let me, let's, let's go back to our, okay, so if you'll notice here, I have what we call step down rings. Okay? That's too close. Let me see if I can do a better focus. There we go. So here you go. Notice that so what I'm looking at here is a so we've got a 77 millimeter. Okay? 67 mm à 55 mm qui est justement Le, le, le diamètre de, du filtre versus le diamètre de l'objectif. So, techniquement, cet ad adaptateur-là, OK, va aller chercher un objectif qui a 55 mm en diamètre de, pour le filtre. Et je vais pouvoir prendre, justement, ma 60, 77 mm, mon, mon filtre polarisant 77 mm. Et maintenant, il est bien adapté pour mes plus petits objectifs. C'est-à-dire que ma plus grande objectif que quand j'ai acheté cette, cette uh, filtre là, when I bought my when I when I bought this filter here, the largest diameter I had of my lens was exactly um, 77 millimeters, which was my 7200. So in case I wanted to use it on the 7200, but most of my other lenses were in the 50s or in the... Here, I've got another one here. This one goes to 52 millimeters... Uh, sorry, 43 millimeters. Okay, from a 52 millimeter to a 43 millimeter. Again, from a, 77, uh, from a 77. I've got other sizes here, which does a 58 to 55 and this one goes down to a 49 okay so with this these two lenses uh, with these two uh, 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 step down rings I can bring it from a 77 all the way down to a 49 you can also find on the internet individual uh, hold on here individual which I prefer so basically what happens here is that with this I go from a 77 to a 52 but you can find even the largest I've seen so far 82 all the way down to 49 millimeters vous pouvez sur l'internet trouver des, des step down ring jusqu'à or, or, or de, de, de 82 mm jusqu'à 49 mm en, euh, en adaptateur simple qui va de suite à la plus grande de la, à, à la plus petite I should have put my, uh, okay, so, um, don't make the mistake, and just because you have 9 or 10 or 12 lenses, think that you need to have 9 or 10 or 12 filters to be able to use them on all of the, uh, the same thing goes for your uh, neutral density uh, circular, um, which is, in my case here, I've got two, just to show you, here I have my, and it's, it's, it's funny to say that the I, here I have a neutral density, six stop, minus six stop. So, moins six stop. Whoop. Twit. So, there we go. So, if you look here, I've got a, well, so this is a minus six stop of light. Okay, and you can see through the, the, the paper there. And I have another one over here, which is a minus 10 stop. So if you look, whoops, if you look it through here, no, if you look, well, you can't even see the paper on the bottom compared to the six stop, which is right here. Six stop, I can still see the paper on the bottom, okay? Uh, these are se both 77 millimeter in diameter, 
but you'll notice that the 10 stop is a thicker filter compared to that minus six stop. So in this particular case, ProMasters, uh, mind you, ProMaster is also a infrared filter, uh, but the actual glass of the filter is also of a different thickness. Okay, so when I put the two of them together, now I have minus 16, and you're not good. We're not going to see any difference here. I can hold it up to my eye and look at my lights, and I uh, not even. I just see the little white light indicator on the um, on the um, the LED light telling me that my light's on. Not even. I don't. E I don't even see uh, the light, the source of light itself. I can actually see in my ceiling, in the pot lights, I can see the bulb when I look through this at minus 16 stops. Uh, what else? Okay, so circular polarizer, what that does is, and typically for the circular polarizer to work uh, properly, you wa absolutely want, um, you know, the most efficient point of polarization occurs when the light source is located literally at 90 degrees. So typically if my light is coming from over here, that's where I can actually control because that is also known as stray light. Stray light is any light that's coming in on the sides of your optics. Okay. Uh, it. Uh, the other thing that this, the 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 uh, excuse me. So c'est à dire que typiquement vous voulez que justement je lis la traduction ici. So typiquement ici vous voulez que le point de polarisation soit le plus efficace se produit lorsque le sujet, euh, la source de lumière est située latéralement euh, à l'environ 90 degrés de où ce que je suis en train de prendre la photo en tant que telle. OK? Um, you also, uh, typically, we can use these during uh, sunsets and sunrises, or sunrises and sunsets, um, depending on, and, and, and the whole purpose of having a polarizer, a variable polarizer, is the fact that that, light actually you know what let's do this i'll show you here like this we're going to do a new focus there we go and if we look here give me a second now is it going to work because the problem is it's not actually you know what what is that that's a 49 Okay, wait, maybe if I do it this way here. So, let's see, do we see any reflections being removed as we... Not that there really is any reflection here. Oh, there we go. Look at the filter here. Watch what, you'll notice that inten the intensity of the reflection, because that's an actual reflection of my spotlight, uh, my spotlight, I should say, my lighting, uh, my second lighting system up there uh, on me. Voyez comment ce que on voit, tu vois, j'ai plus de réflexion là que ici. Ça diminue quand même. Okay? C'est ça, ça que ça fait un polarisant, c'est que ça enlève la réflexion des, des, des lumières qui viennent. Puis plus que ta lumière est en angle, plus que la lumière est en angle, plus que vous verrez qu'il n'y a, 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 a pas de réflexion en tant que telle. C'est comme, moi, personnellement, si j'aurais pu mettre un filtre polarisant sur mon webcam, les réflexions qui sont dans, sur mes, dans mes lunettes en tant que telles, tu les enlèveras. Puis vous verrez clairement en, en travers de mes, euh, de mes, de, 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 de les, les lancers de mes, mes, euh, voyons, mes verres, mes verres, voyons, mes lunettes, <laughs> excusez. So, uh, and, and as a perfect example here is that if you were shooting, if, now, okay, I particularly do not like using polarizers when it comes to portrait photography, okay? Portrait photography, there is no use to having a polarizer on a subject, 
a human like me. What it does is typically, and, and a lot of times people forget the polarizers on, so they don't even attempt to adjust it, okay? And then they're going to wonder why they get a kind of like a plastic, plasticky uh, effect on the skin, okay? Because it, it basically what it does is it turns the skin kind of like silly putty. I don't know if you ever played with silly putty in the past. Uh, it was one of the big, big things in my, in my, my day when I was a kid. Um, and what it does, it, it kind of, t it removes all, basically, because you're removing that stray light, it's removing all of the shadows that might have been, might be created by that side light. Uh, C'est-à-dire que, uh, moi, typiquement, je n'utilise jamais un polarisant en tant que tel sur un, dans un portrait, or pour un portrait, je veux dire. Okay? Parce que qu'est-ce que ça fait, c'est que ça fait plastifier le, le, le pot en tant que tel, puis on perd on perd la texture du poids. Ça ne veut pas dire que ça l'enlève les rides. Okay? Ce n'est pas la même chose. là. Okay? Ça, c'est ta lumière, ton éclairage qui va enlever les rides. Euh, c'est réellement l'effet que le, 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 le pot devient comme genre plastifié. Comme, comme quand, dans mon temps, quand j'étais, ben, <rire> là, une quarantaine d'années, 45 ans, euh, ça fait justement... Euh, Lisse, 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 lisse comme le pot, puis on ne voit plus euh, les pores, on voit, ne on voit aucun détail euh, en fonction de la structure du pot. Euh, pour continuer, to continue on, you also have color filters. Now, color filters, uh, and again, color filters were mostly used um, for uh, black and white photography because in the dark room, we couldn't control saturation and we couldn't control contrast in itself uh, so what we the only way that we could actually um, control contrast and control sharp well not sharpness well sharpness in a certain way yes is uh, changing the hues of light and saturation of light entering uh, the lens and typically the, in, in, in those days you had an orange filter or a red filter a green filter sometimes a blue filter and and that in itself would uh, help um, add that contrast or add that uh, saturation uh, you know like for instance uh, having a blue filter will let more blue light in having an orange filter will uh, literally um, have more orange light coming in red the same thing um, you can also use it uh, use color use coloring lens filters uh, depending if you want to um, just you know create a blue hue to everything or a red hue to everything okay um, but again normally or if actually you know what you could use uh, and when we have them they're called CTO filters what they do is they color correct the light uh, in tones of uh, orange or blue or green, depending if you're using fluorescent light, if you're using uh, uh, tungsten light, uh, incandescent lighting, uh, you can control um, what kind of, you know, so your your image is less warm, less uh, less orangey. Uh, well, then you could use those filters uh, to, to compensate for that. You also have uh, night. Uh, photography filters uh, which can be used uh, to clear up mainly light pollution now these particular filters are usually um, they're a little bit towards the magenta and what it does is it removes all that tungsten and all that all those mercury lights uh, that you would normally see and it brings your 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 night sky closer to a black sky okay closer to the dark sky as possible um, uh, what else have we got here? You've got, okay, you have special effects filters also, uh, which are uh, infrared, uh, an infrared filter, basically. Now, understand that uh, these types of filters, uh, the infrared filter is actually already on your, um, oh, sorry, what am I saying? Not, no, excuse, scratch that. Infrared filter allows you to. What happens with an infrared filter? Let me see here. I gotta get you an image that infrared uh, IR photo. Just to show you what, because what it does is it turns everything that's organic green becomes white, literally. So what happens is where you have vegetation. 
So all of the leaves here are, and the thing is also, because infrared is not at the same wavelength as observational light, the actual focus is slightly off. And if I'm not mistaken, from what I remember, infrared is slightly far, the, 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 the um, what we call, well, the, the focus point of the infrared rays are farther away than than uh, normal light is okay so uh, and in in the old 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 you'll notice on this particular this is my my this is my camera that I learned photography on but if I show you here let me get a little bit closer so that I can so what we're going to do this here like this is it going to find its focus yes it did you'll notice that over here right beside the distance mark which is that white that white diamond there there's a little red r and that little red r is telling me that if i if i had a infrared filter on this camera no sorry if i had a um if i had a um infrared filter on this camera i would have to measure my distance using the r here so my if i want to focus at five feet okay i would have to actually oh, sorry five meters 15 feet i'd actually have to put my 15 feet at the r mark because that's where the uh, infrared rays come into focus okay so there's a slight difference in focusing when it comes to infrared and infrared gives you exactly these types of images here so notice how my sky and my water is bluer you'll also notice that everything here that is um, green turns out white and look over here so here we have a fall um, image where and actually let's blow this up put the image alone Everything here that's orange and yellow is now shoot, is now coming out as reds over here. What's blue turns out bluish green a little bit more. Okay. And then what do we got over here? Grab another last example. See, here's another fall. Another fall image. So we've got browns, greens. Well, actually, what would be green would actually be white, which there's very little here because most of everything here is already turned on us. So probably yellow grass, yellow and orange in the trees. Can you get the can you get the same image in Photoshop? You can. There are, um, and I mean, uh, Nick Collection has uh, what's it called? It's called Color Effects. Uh, where you can apply digital filters to simulate this type of photography. Uh, but be, I'll be honest with you, I know a lot of photographers who do infrared photography who prefer, um, what they'll do is rather than selling an older body, they'll take the older body, they'll have the uh, infrared filter, uh, not the infrared, sorry, the UV filter removed from the sensor and have an actual um, infrared filter replace that UV filter now speaking of because I just mentioned UV when it came to film photography we didn't have clear um, filters we actually used UV filters because between the lens and the film, there were no built-in there were no built-in filters. And I'll tell you a little secret: all of your digital cameras, when you take your lens off, especially those who have the uh, the mirrorless cameras like me, versus the DSLRs, because the DSLR has the mirror uh, between the lens and, and the sensor. Uh, but all of the cameras, all, tous les miroirs, tous les sans miroirs, parce qu'on peut voir déjà le, 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 le capteur en tant que tel, 
that surface, that glass surface that you're looking at is not the sensor itself. That is the actual UV filter. Okay. So every, doesn't matter what, every digital camera has a UV filter because the UV filter cancels out the UVs so that you can get a more precise focus and a more precise sharpness on your image. Uh, C'est-à-dire que uh, sur tous les 100 miroirs, um, quand même qu'on dit que il faut faire attention quand vous enlevez vos objectifs parce que le capteur il est à l'air libre. Ce n'est pas, pas le capteur en tant que tel, c'est le filtre UV qui est là. Fait Aujourd'hui, en fonction du numérique, ça ne vaut pas la peine d'aller chercher un filtre UV comme justement je l'ai sur mon, sur mon, euh, mon Minolta, qui est un, un appareil, euh, voyons, c'est un appareil euh, pellicule. What we usually tell you to do, okay, as far as salesmen go, we are, and, and I, and I, I'll be honest with you, I am very strong uh, for this school of thought, okay? A, every lens should have a protective filter on it, because... I and we, I've listen. I've been with Gaslain for six years. I have never actually seen a lens being returned for repair because that first element was scratched. Okay. Now, clear filters are not UV filters. UV filters in the time were much thicker pieces of glass. They were about three, four, sometimes they were a good three or four millimeters thick. Okay. And as an optician, as I worked for, I had a, I had a, I had an astronomy shop where I used to build mirrors. For telescopes, I learned a lot about how lenses work and how, how you know, how refracting and, and, and reflecting light to creating an image is, works. And at the at, at the time of the UV filters, they were thick enough that every surface of glass that your light passes through impedes on that final image because that piece of glass, when light passes through a, a plane of glass, it has to fill that piece of glass and then pass through and then fill that other piece of glass and pass through. Lenses all work that way, okay? You always have to incorporate the transmission through that. And that's a lot of the times uh, why, you know, different elements are, are constructed of different materials. C'est-à-dire que uh, quand on avait les filtres UV, uh, en pellicule, uh, je veux dire, en euh, les, les filtres en tant que tels étaient beaucoup plus euh, épais comparé à un filtre protecteur aujourd'hui. Un filtre protecteur aujourd'hui va avoir peut-être un point, point 5 mm à 1.5 mm. Okay? C'est juste là pour protéger l'objectif, euh, pas l'objectif, mais je veux dire la, la lentille la principale à l'ouverture du... du, du, du euh, à l'ouverture du... du la, le premier élément en tant que tel pour ne pas pour, pour, pour protéger, pour pas que ça soit graffiné. Parce que, je t'avoue, là, dans les, dernières, dans les derniers six ans que je travaille pour Gosselin, puis euh, même avant ça, euh, j'ai jamais vraiment vu un, un compagnie, ou ce qui, un compagnie, peu importe la compagnie, où ce qui ont repris un objectif qui était graffiné, ou euh, ils ont, graffiné, ou, ils ont plus de tendance de dire, écoutez, remplacer l'objectif au, au, au complet. Parce que faut comprendre que l'exercice de démonter l'objectif, changer la première euh, élément, puis la remonter par après, c'est pas aussi simple que ça. OK? To be, to, to having to, to, to disassemble a lens, and a lens can, can, can contain anywhere from 10, well, it actually can contain anything from 4 elements to 30 elements in that barrel of that lens. OK? Nobody, the, the time and, and cost it, 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 it is, that is incurred in, in, in disassembling all of those optics for that one problematic element and then reassembling it, everything has to be realigned. And if you have 30 elements to realign, it can take hours and it can take a couple of days. All right. And at that point, the actual repair costs more than the actual fabrication of the of the lens itself so a lot of these companies will turn around and say listen you know replace the lens it's not it's not covered under warranty and listen we can't it, it's 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 an impact failure it's not it's not a, a manufacturing failure um so c'est sûr et certain je vais toujours dire uh, peu importe quel objectif que, que, que j'ai un objectif à 50 pièces ou j'ai un objectif à, à 5000 dollars je vais toujours mettre 
un, 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 pas un polarisant, excusez, un protecteur dessus. I'll always put a protector, uh, which is a clear filter. Uh, and I've, I'll, the, the glass itself is so thin, it's, it, there's no light loss. Okay, so if you're worried about that, uh, I'm telling you now, I'll demystify it. There's nothing to worry about for that matter. Okay, uh, let's see what else we got over here on this. Uh, so you've got, uh, okay, so you've got all kinds of different effect filters that you can pick up. Uh, skylight filter usually was a filter that was a little bit tinted to the, uh, bonjour, monsieur, uh, Pentros, Pentronzio, sorry, <laughs> Pentronzio, um, Bienvenue à, au, au, au poste. On est quand même vers la fin, mais vous pouvez toujours regarder euh, l'enregistrement le, le, euh, dans, dans quelques heures. Euh, on parlait aujourd'hui de filtres en, en, en tant que tel. Et puis, justement, euh, just so that everybody is aware, I will be talking about uh, digital filters. Je vais parler des filtres euh, numériques euh, dans le logiciel de Lightroom principalement. Euh, parce que justement, euh, Lightroom vient avec des euh, filtres gradués en fonction de densité neutre et aussi de saturation. Uh, other than that, you've also got what we call star filters or fog filters, and what that does is it adds um, a particular effect uh, to the image at the moment you take the picture. Okay, uh, so these are all these are all effect filters. These are things that are you know you can do in post treatment most. You know, um, processing filters are, are, are all available in uh, softwares like Nick Collection, uh, Luminar. Uh, they, all, they have all of these filters. As a matter of fact, um, Nick Collection has, um, and you can do it manually using Lightroom itself, but when I was talking to you about the uh, color filters, you can, you can actually uh, have a decent, um, a decent quality effect Uh, using you know using a, a simulated red filter, green filter, blue filter, whatever, and that's exactly what uh, actually that's exactly what Fuji does with their black and white filters. C'est-à-dire que uh, justement en parlant de de, de Nick Collection puis Luminar, c'est que um, ce sont des, des des filtres qui jouent avec la quantité de couleurs qui sont déjà sur le, le dans la photo en tant que telle. C'est toujours mieux de, de 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 les traiter traiter des raw en temps, en temps au, au, au lieu de, excusez, les, les JPEG, mais euh, le, les profils que je vous parlais à propos de, il me semble que même Canon dans les, dans les, euh, dans les marques R, puis Nikon dans les marques C, euh, les modèles Z, euh, ils, ont, ils ont intégré aussi les euh, filtres noir et blanc colorés, c'est-à-dire un noir et blanc avec un filtre rouge, un filtre vert ou un filtre jaune. Um, mais dans Nick Collection, vous avez tous les euh, filtres colorés, orange, bleu, vert, rouge, euh, que vous pouvez jouer avec en fonction. Qu'est-ce que ça fait? C'est que ça fait un équivalent de, de saturer le rouge pour que ça soit un peu plus, que, la, que, que ça tire un peu plus en contraste en noir et blanc pour le rouge en tant que tel. What these filters actually do, what these post-processing filters do, and I'll show you these filters um, on Monday afternoon, um, Uh, sorry, on fr uh, Wednesday afternoon. I'm still working out my schedule for the new episodes, but uh, Nick Collection has the has all of the color filters, and basically what it's doing is it's saturating the reds more, saturating the blues more, saturating the greens more, just to be able to get, bring that bring out that contrast that you're looking for in your black and white. Okay. Uh, now, circular filters versus square filters. Um, first, uh, con. Uh, sorry, con. Pros. Easy to use without any filter holder for circular filters. The attachments to the lenses with it attaches to the lens with no residual glare because when you when you've actually screwed on that filter, there's no possible stray light coming in from the sides that might happen using square filters. Okay, price is economic. And they're smaller in size and in weight. Okay. Uh, cons, they're less versatile uh, when we need to move the filter. So, you know, using a graduated filter, literally a graduated filter that might be in the... Oh, well, hang on. I have a graduated filter. Here it is. While this is screwed onto the lens, 
um, if my focusing ring is on the end of the lens and I try to turn this wheel, the, this the secondary filter here that's in the that's inset into the actual filter, sometimes I'm changing my focus too because it's just too tight. Okay. Um, cannot use different filters at the same time because they are actually rather already uh, uh, well thick okay and possible side effects like vignette in the corners you don't necessarily want to have a filter that's too thick because when you're using a very wide angle lens typically what's happening is um, you're capturing the corners because right because don't forget your lens is made for having for all of the light entering from the side give or take let's say maybe half an inch to a quarter of an inch outside of that lens okay on va juste faire ça en même temps en français pour nos collègues et amis francophones so un filtre circulaire ça nous euh, pour euh, voyons pour les pores c'est facile à utiliser sans euh, porte euh, porte filtre comme qu'on a besoin pour des filtres carrés la fixation à l'objectif euh, sans éblouissement résiduel. résiduel. Euh, le prix est écon économique, puis la taille et poids est plus, est plus petit. Euh, dans les contres, moins polyvalent poly poly quand on a besoin de déplacer du filtre. C'est comme je vous expliquais tantôt, c'est que après que vous avez vissé votre filtre sur votre objectif, si jamais votre mise au point se fait au bout de la lentille, des fois, c'est tellement serré pour bouger la, 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 la partie qui est graduée que je bouge mon mise au point. Euh, J'allais dire quelque chose d'autre aussi. Que, euh, ah oui, aussi. Une autre euh, problématique avec ça aussi, c'est que typiquement, quand c'est des filtres qui sont variables comme ça ici, des fois, je suis en train de... de, 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 de tu sais, sans savoir, je suis en train de, de serrer le filtre sur l'objectif. Et puis, des, ça, ça, ça m'a déjà arrivé où ce que fallait qu'on en... Tu sais, fallait forcer pour l'enlever parce qu'on n'a pas pu l'enlever euh, parce qu'il y avait juste trop de tension. Puis, à chaque fois qu'on vissait pour... Euh, voyons, pour serrer... Euh, dans, dans le même sens que serré sur l'objectif, a devenu trop serré sur l'objectif. Sur puis, fallait l'extraire euh, autrement. Euh, nous ne pouvons pas utiliser des différents filtres en même temps, c'est sûr et certain, parce que euh, vous pouvez quand même, comme, comme j'avais ici, là, je n'irai jamais stacker plus que deux filtres de densité neutre fixe, qui est à peu près la même chose que qu ce que vous avez avec un filtre gradué. OK et les effets secondaires euh, possibles viennent de la vignotage que ça crée quand c'est trop large. Et puis, je suis en train de pogner les bords de le filtre en tant que tel. Square filters. OK. The filter, is, it require, you have to have, you cannot use a square filter on a round lens. That's for sure. OK. So, you have to have the filter holder. That's also why they are more expensive. OK. So, this is a con. Uh, residual light uh, may occur when taking long uh, daytime exposures. Very true. And I, I had that exact um, uh, situation happen to one of my um, students that was taking my uh, long exposure class um, at the, when I was doing uh, waterfalls and rivers, where it was also a little bit the concept itself of, of the filter she was using a lee filters i was using my nisi filter and what was happening was in my system the polarizer is set inside the fold, the holder itself so my polarizer screws inside here while lee filter was on top of my my um, neutral density filters And what ended up happening was she'd taken her pictures, taken her pictures. When she got home, she said to me, she says, hey, Jay, for some reason, I got this blue glare. And I said, I said to myself, I says, well, I said, that doesn't make sense. I says, you shouldn't have a blue glare there or you shouldn't have that mark there. It looks like something is reflecting in between your filters. And when we looked at it again later on, that's when I found out that the way that Lee filter 
and 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 again they're marketing this filter holder on the fact that there's a it's a quick release um polarizer i don't think it was it was a good move uh because it introduces that that particular defect uh they're also bigger in weight bigger in size and listen this is my filter case that i have to carry with me okay whoops that i have to carry with me so it's you know um i'm actually trying to see if i can can't find a case that's more um softer than this having a box on your on your waist is is rather uncomfortable the benefits or the pros with the square filter is that they're more versatile with better handling um for your filters you can keep them cleaner uh, they're just easier to handle. Uh, you can adjust them how you wish. Uh, they usually consist of two or more filter slots, enabling uh, the use of several filters at the same time. So in my case, I can actually use four filters, the polarizer with my minus 10, my minus 6, and my minus 3 graduated filter, uh, which you can't do when it comes to the circular filters. And they usually reduce the appearance of the vignette because of the way that they're set up. They're built so that you shouldn't get any type of vignette, but I will tell you that with my 16 millimeter on my full frame, I do get the vignette um, from the 16 millimeter. So typically, uh, you know, look at more 20 millimeter, 18 millimeters when using the Nisi, uh, just maybe because it's a little bit thicker than, you know, should be. Um, and I mean, worse comes to worse, if I wanted to, I could always take off the first run and only use two filters at a time. Okay, um, it, you know it. It all depends on the size of or the thickness of your filters themselves. Puis encore pour les uh, comptes, uh, pour les filtres carrés, uh, pas filtre et requis. Uh, la manipulation, la, la manipulation uh, peut être plus compliquée uh, au début. Il y, a, il, y a, il y a toujours une courbe d'apprentissage de comment l'utiliser. Une lumière résiduelle euh, peut se produire lors de la prise de vue en longue durée, en, en longue exposition, je veux dire. C'est-à-dire, puis la raison pourquoi, c'est que, euh, il, peut, il peut avoir des réflexions dépendant de où est mon soleil toujours. Euh, C'est-à-dire que la, les réflexions, pour moi, deviennent plus quand le soleil est en arrêt de moi, parce que quest ce qui arrive, c'est que la lumière rentre entre... Les, euh, les espaces des filtres, généralement plus chers en raison du nombre de pièces concernées. Euh, filtre plus grand, porte-filtre euh, porte et bague d'adaptation. Je t'avoue que, vu que je donne mes cours de, de, de longue exposition euh, chute et rivière, euh, moi, j'ai été chercher tous les euh, adaptateurs, euh, qu'est-ce qu'on appelle les step-down, pour que tout le monde qui prenne mes, mon cours en tant que tel peut l'essayer sur leurs objectifs, peu importe quel objectif qu'ils ont. Euh, puis leur taille est plus grande et, et puis aussi un peu plus pesant. Euh, malgré que, euh, malgré de ces, ces, ces désavantages-là, les avantages, c'est que c'est plus polyvalent euh, avec une meilleure manipulation de nos filtres. Euh, on compose généralement de deux emplacements de filtres ou plus. Donc, normalement, moi, dans dans mon kit à moi, euh, j'ai justement quatre, euh, quatre niveaux de filtre. Vous, vous avez le polarisant qui est à l'intérieur. Après ça, j'ai trois emplacements pour être capable d'utiliser euh, trois différents euh, filtres carrés ou rectangulaires, dépendant si j'utilise le, 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 le dégradé. Et puis, euh, réduit généralement euh, l'apparence de vignette à notre im euh, image. Toujours, toujours, toujours en fonction, il faut faire attention, c'est toujours en fonction de votre focale. Euh, je t'avoue que mon ici, à moi, euh, j'ai des problématiques où ce que le, euh, quand j'utilise ma 16-35 à 16 mm, je, je vais voir un tantinet de euh, vignettage, tandis que normalement, j'essaie de rester dans, dans, dans 18 à 20 mm euh, quand je peux. 20 mm pour moi, quand même 20 mm, c'est assez large pour moi quand je fais un, 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 un paysage. Euh, en tant que tel. Euh, maintenant, je vais juste vous montrer, euh, parce que je vois qu'on est quand même euh, vers la fin de notre heure. Et je vais juste, donne-moi une, une petite seconde. Je vais aller chercher ma dernière, euh, 
justement, euh, non, c'est pas ça, ma dernière chute et rivière que j'ai pris en fonction de ma longue exposition. Et puis, euh, voyons. My L drive down again. Exposure, long exposure. Um, ah, Celui-là. So, quand je regarde ça, non, il n'est pas là. Attends, il n'est pas là. Ça veut dire que il va être. Seconde, j'arrive. Euh... Ouais, ici, je l'ai, je l'ai, je l'ai, je l'ai. Voilà. Et puis, justement, mon exposition de 10 minutes, c'était. Ça, c'est mon 8. Ça, c'est 8. Non, c'est pas ça. Ici. Euh, je ne sais pas si vous avez euh, suivi. Euh, je vous l'avais montré aussi quand j'ai fait mon euh, traitement de, justement, euh, paysage euh, longue exposition. Mais, justement, celui que je vous parle... ici, if you see here, this is 616 seconds at f10 at 200 ISO, and this was using 16 stops. So I had my 16 stop. I uh, said so I said I had my 10 minus 10, my minus six uh, filter, and it took 10 minutes to take this picture. And I I actually cropped out the vignette because if you look here, you'll notice. Well, you know what? Let's go back to the original image. Uh, get out of there. The original image should be... Which one is it? This one should be... It uh, should be this one here. No, not this one. Well... Where's the original image on this one? It is up here. Hold on just a sec. We're going to do this. And now we're going to do... I'm going to remove the crop. So, I don't know if you can see it, but... I can. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for you know the R. You'll notice here. Give it a sec. No. Well, there's a slight tinge of a vignette here. I'm trying to see where I saw it best. Uh, uh, mind you, was this my 28 millimeter? Uh, oh, no, 17 millimeter. Well, I mean, I can see that there's a bit of a vignette over here. There's a bit of a dark spot right there. I don't know if you can. There's a bit, you know, it's darker here than it should be. So it all, dip, you know, it all. When you look at the image, actually, you can actually seeing the whole image, you can see it here. Notice this dark spot there. There's a dark spot over here. Not Look past the branches. Look past the tree over here. Um, but uh, there is a slight vignette that happens even using um, my filter holder for my... Um, but if you want to know what a 10-minute photo looks like, this is exactly what a 10-minute photo looks like. Right there. That's it. And then from that image, from that image I did, so you've got a couple of black and whites here. Yeah. 
So, with all, c'est quoi? Uh, c'est quoi la marque de la boîte de filtre? OK. So, justement, j'ai sorti. So, I went onto our site uh, where I work at Gosselin. And what we're looking at is this company here, Nisi. And they do a, a filter system of 100 millimeters. Okay, typically you can use 100 millimeters up to about a 16 millimeter um, lens. En, en fonction du focal, vous pouvez utiliser jusqu'à un, un, un 16 millimètres en fonction de l'objectif. Um, la mienne, comme je vous dis, uh, Nissi mesure uh, physiquement 82 millimètres. Puis il vient déjà avec trois adaptateurs. Uh, vous regardez ici. So, ça, c'est le kit um, qui est spécifiquement de base en tant que tel, euh, vous avez le polarisant ici, vous avez l'adaptateur la, du 82 au porte-filtre, porte puis vous avez trois grandeurs déjà qui sont... Euh, so justement, c'est un 82, vous avez un, un, un euh, adaptateur à 77, 72 et 67 en fonction de tes adaptateurs. So this is the base Uh, which comes with this is the basic uh, kit which comes with the polarizer it comes with the actual um, uh, well the um, so the, the, the whole thing is is that this part of the uh, this ring here is what screws onto the lens and then what happens is the actual holder you just kind of slide it in and then you pull on the little screw and now it's clicked in and now I can adjust this as I want Okay, so that is this piece here to this piece here. And then from here to the lens you have, this is an 82 millimeter. You've got a 70, you've got a 77 there, a 72 here, and a 67. These are the three that automatically come with it. The other ones, I'll be honest with you, I ended up going on the internet. It was just much cheaper for me to, 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 to purchase them off the internet. It comes with its own case. Okay, so let me see here. This is what the, that's what the filter holder looks like. That's what the polarizer looks like. This is exactly uh, with that's with a cap. This is basically a 1635 lens from Sony. Um, you also have the kit that I bought is the where is it? It's in here somewhere. Uh, it should be. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I took the. Bear with me a moment. Okay, really? I guess the equivalent that I would have is... The Advanced Filter Kit. No, it's not that one. Uh, because the reason it's not that one... It's this one. Uh, well, mine was the starter kit here. This one here. Okay, and the starter kit comes with Oh, sorry. So, here we have our 10 stop, 6 stop, 3 stop graduated. Comes with a cleaning kit here. Comes with the case hard case um, right now we're out of stock I see you have the filter holder you have the polarizer again you have the uh, adapter ring the 82 millimeter main adapter ring and then you have the step down rings uh, from uh, so 82 to 77 to 72 to 67 okay uh, normally I don't think really well I mean it depends what kind of Dépendant de quelle sorte de, 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 quelle sorte de, de, de objectif que vous avez, c'est sûr et certain, si vos objectifs sont dans les 52, 55, 49 mm, ça prend les autres adaptateurs. Okay. Mais euh, c'est un, un très bon euh, kit complet. Il y a un autre av advanced kit à 1000 quelques piastres. Mais celui à 1000 quelques piastres, euh, qu'est-ce qu'il donne de plus? Que non, je l'ai vu tantôt. 
Et puis à date, là, je te dirais que ça donne tout qu ce que j'aurais qu besoin en fonction de à celui-ci. Et celui-là vient avec, c'est ça, il vient avec un, euh, la grande différence, c'est vraiment qu'il vient avec aussi un, fait que tu as le, le 10, le moins 6, le moins 3, tu as un inversé, so, inversé c'est que, euh, ok, c'est ça, c'est ça la, la grande différence, c'est que tu as le gradué, 3 stops, et tu as le inversé où ce que ton trois stops commence dans le milieu, puis après ça, il se dégrade vers l'extérieur. OK. Honnêtement, je n'ai jamais vraiment eu le besoin d'avoir l'inversé en tant que tel. Euh, et puis, je n'ai pas à date eu la, 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 le besoin techniquement d'aller chercher le trois stop. So, you know, ça dépend quest ce que vous voulez faire. Sinon, vous avez aussi des filtres ronds. Puis, vous voyez que quand même, puis chacun, il est fait dans tous les des diamètres en tant en temps de les objectifs. Tu as un 82 mm ici à 214, tu as un 72 ici à 174. Euh, as la, ouais. Puis ça, c'est, excusez, ça, c'est BMW. On en a aussi en Nikon, on en a um, Pro Master. Tu as un 82 mm ici à 234. Je t'avoue que ça, c'est un, un variable aussi, si je, si je crois bien. Euh, oui, c'est un polarisant. Ben oui, c'est un polarisant. C'est sûr que c'est variable. Euh, quand même, euh, les, les HGX Prime, ce sont seuls que j'utilise moi-même aussi. Et puis, euh, je les trouve très, très, très efficaces en fonction de... Euh, tous, les, tous les HGX Prime de, de Pro, euh, Pro Master, je les trouve très, très bien en fonction de euh, polarisant ou densité neutre. Euh, puis, j'avais sorti... Euh, oui, ça, c'était des fils carrés de Nissi encore. En passant, euh, le Nissi euh, 100 mm par 150 mm, c'est standard pour euh, tout qu ce qui est porte-filtre euh, carré. Euh, la, la norme est, puis il y a t as, t as, les, les, les deux autres compagnies que, que, que j'ai en tête en fonction de ça, c'est euh, t'as Coquin, euh, qui est un, 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 un compagnie français, et vous avez aussi ben, les filters. Uh, Nisi, uh, honestly, uh, you've got other, two other companies also that, that do the uh, square rectangular filters. You've got uh, Koken, or Koken, Koken, and you've got um, Lee filters. Um, understand that I, un, I, well, actually, Koken, I believe, now does glass filters. Nisi, the, the beauty about Nisi is the fact that they are actually glass filters. They're not plastic filters. Um, I started early, early uh, in my time with the Koken filters, but they were plastic, and they tended to, after a good, after a good year of use, uh, they tended to scratch very easily. Um, this is glass. Uh, this is the same caliber as, uh, in my, in my honest opinion, the same caliber as Lee filters. Um, they're glass filters. Actually, the other thing that I found very interesting about them too is that. If you look on the back, and here we'll switch over to the to my side camera here, you'll notice that there's a foam here, and that foam is to add a um, is 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 exactly to add a little bit of light insulation so that there is no um, light leaking into the lens, because typically when you put the two square filters together. And the square filter onto your uh, holder, uh, they seal in the light. So I find that 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 I that I have to admit is is, is a very good plus for them. Uh, I see that I have a couple of fingerprints. I've got to clean off those filters. But in the meantime, I wish you all of a, a wonderful Monday, a wonderful week. Uh, I'll be back here on uh, Wednesday, uh, the, uh, same time, same afternoon. Uh, I mean, same uh, um, time at 3:30, and we'll be talking about. Uh, digital filters on Lightroom. Uh, we'll look at Nick Collection also. And um, yeah, so I wish you all a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope it was uh, informational. Excusez. Uh, je vous remercie pour votre attention et vos oreilles, c'est sûr. Si vous avez liké, si vous avez liké, si vous avez aimé l'épisode, s'il vous plaît, like. Euh, dans les commentaires l'épisode 
si vous n'êtes pas abonné, s'il vous plaît, abonnez-vous. Euh, on cherche toujours d'avoir plus d'abonnements, c'est sûr. Et puis, euh, justement, avec nous, on est supposé de retourner euh, au travail euh, le, le, la semaine prochaine. Fait que c'est sûr et certain, l'horaire va changer, peut-être le nombre d'épisodes aussi. Et aussi, peut-être que je vais, je, je vais, je vais carrément you know, commencer à faire moitié préenregistré et euh, live, ça va juste diminuer un peu euh, à quel point. C'est sûr et certain, je vais regarder les... Euh, les défis hebdomadaires, peut-être les élargir un peu en fonction de temps. Uh, so, you know, uh, we're, sca- we're slated to start up next week uh, back, at the, uh, back at the shop uh, with Gus Lane. Uh, unless things change again this week, we'll see. We'll see how th- things progress. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we'll be back here Wednesday, uh, Friday. Um, I might have to change, move things around a little bit as far as episodes and when my lives I might also do rather than doing all live my half live half uh, pre-recorded um, and otherwise um, other than that the, listen uh, just you know go out shoot you know I know that we're in confinement as long as you you know and don't forget to please keep that two meter distance as much as possible um, uh, and I mean you know photography is not you know it's you know you can as much as you know we do it with the photo clubs and whatever uh just have your camera with you and go and shoot um uh, you know uh, as a matter of fact i i also wanted to uh, dedicate this episode uh, to a very special person in my heart uh my little uh four-year-old today turned five uh so this goes out to uh, my daughter dakota uh as far as uh, that's who i'm going to meet up now uh, to see what they're doing Uh, have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. Keep shooting. Don't don't get discouraged. If you don't get it the first time, try 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 again. Okay. Uh, sois pas découragé. Uh, je veux que vous pratiquiez, que vous que... puis ceux qui sont pas déjà, je vois qu'aujourd'hui il y a eu quelques quelques nouveaux personnes. Si vous êtes pas déjà invité à le groupe Facebook uh, pour les défis hebdomadaires, if you're not already uh, plugged into the Facebook group. Uh, that I created for the weekly challenges, please, by all means, send me a, send me a heads up and I'll, I'll immediately, I'll put you up on the, uh, on the Facebook group so that you can participate in the, uh, in the uh, weekly challenges. And that's what they're there for. Uh, I, so I've got a lot of catching up to do myself. Apologize for the, but uh, hell yeah. Uh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Take care guys. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.